Hi, my name is Julieta Diaz and I am a data scientist at TIPCO. Welcome to this Team Studio enablement video. This is the getting started video where I'm going to give you an orientation into Team Studio and what it looks like. When you first open up Team Studio, you will have the home view. In it, you will see a site snapshot where you can find the number of workspaces, the data set associations, the work files, and how many people are working in this particular instance. You can also see activities related to this instance. For example, who has been working on what, and a general overview of the different types of activities that people in your team might be up to. You also notice some recent activity showing the things that others are doing in the workspace, but specific to the different places that they are working in. The menu on the top left has a few different menus. The most important one is the workspaces. When you land on it, it looks as if it's simply a list of all the different workspaces that are available along with the different owners of the workspaces. If you like to create a new workspace, all you have to do is go to the right-hand side where it says Create New Workspace. In our case, we will give it the name Team Studio Demo. You can choose whether you want it to be public or private. In the public workspace, anybody with an authenticated account to this instance will be able to see it. Private means you will have to add the members. Let's create a private one. When you land on every workspace, it looks like this, with some suggestions on how to get started. Now, let's say we want to add some more team members to collaborate within the workspace. You can do that by clicking on the Add Team Members option, and then you will be able to search for different people. You can add people just by clicking on the plus button, or you can add all if this is applicable to your workspace. In this case, I will go ahead and add Michael Lee Gaia. You can also send her permission to be a project member or it can be a different role. I'm just going to call her a project member and she will be able to do everything that I can. Finally, we will save the changes. You also notice on the right hand side that you can do a couple of other things that might be interesting. For example, you may want to add tags so, in our case, we are talking about a demo. And we are making videos for you, so we could call this video. Maybe you want to talk about a particular client, so we can add client. Um, you could also do examples of the type of things that you are up to. So let's say we want to do some regression uh, modeling. Uh, so you can just add a bunch of tags here that you can then search for later again. You can also go to add or edit members. Uh, if you need to go back and add some more people or if you want to remove uh, some of the members, uh, there is also an add a note option here. So, for example, let's write, hi, this is created for video demo purposes. Uh, you can also attach certain files in the notes if you think that they are relevant. Uh, when you are in the workspace, probably these tabs here are the most important to you. The data sources, 
uh, will show whatever is available to you within your instance. In our case, we've got some databases, uh, among which is TDB, and we also have some clusters here, but this will depend on your configuration. The data tab will talk about specific data sets if we want to associate them with the workflow. The work files tab is probably the most important tab where you can do several things like upload different types of files. You can, for example, upload PDFs or anything that you think you might need in this workspace. You can also create an SQL file, which will be a SQL query. You can add a link if you think that a URL might be important to your task. You can add a Jupyter notebook as well and create new workflows. The jobs tab is the place where you schedule the kind of tasks that you need to do. Let's go to the work files tab again and create a new workflow. First, you have to give your workflow a name. So we can call this video demo workflow. And then you will associate some of the data sources. When clicking on Add Workflow, it will create a workflow and open a drag and drop interface with all the different operators. Thank you for watching. Please check out our other videos for more information on how to do more specific and detailed tasks.